again, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Uh, in case you're watching and you don't know who I am, my name is Robbie Ridgway. I'm pastor at Amelia Baptist Church uh, in Beaumont, Texas. Uh, so if you're a visitor with us, if you're new with us, or if you've been with us but you have not uh, got to meet us all, we're glad to have you with us. Uh, as you're joining us, remember you can share this video, share it live, share it later. Um, Share it whenever the Lord might lead you to or when somebody might ask or you think it might speak to them. Uh, this morning we're going to be in Luke chapter 21, uh, starting in verse 34. So start turning in your Bibles there if you've got them with you, or I'll read the text uh, in just a moment. We're going to read here uh, in Luke's Gospel, and this is really the end of a section where uh, Jesus is, for most of chapter 21, really kind of looking forward. We might call it his eschatological uh, predictions or prophecies. Uh, he, he's explaining a little bit for us what it's going to look like, how we might recognize his return, or, or we could either say his return, his second coming. Uh, scripture actually just calls it his coming. Uh, but when he comes again, after he's died on the cross, been buried in the tomb, and rose from the dead. We know that he's coming again one day to judge uh, the final judgment of the world, to bring the full and the complete realization of the kingdom of God um, into this world. Uh, what I want us to be careful of is that we're not looking as we read Jesus' words in this chapter, and you can go back and read it uh, in just a moment, help you get a little more context. I don't want us to be focused on how we're going to know that Jesus has come or will come or is coming. Uh, Jesus is not focused on uh, the signs of the times, the, the, the way that we know that he is returning. He's not focusing on that. He's focusing on our preparation. And we'll talk about that more in just a moment as we read, after we read the text. But I want you to keep that in mind. He's not worried about you having a chart of Jesus is going to return on this day or that day at this time when this event happens and that event happens. That's not what Jesus is focused on. Actually, Jesus tells us that he, that he doesn't even know the day or the time of his return. Only the Father, God the Father, knows that. Uh, but for those of you who just joined us, we're in Luke chapter 21. And we're going to be start, start reading in verse 34. So join me in that. Jesus says, Be on your guard so that your minds are not dulled from carousing, drunkenness, and worries of life. Or that day will come on you unexpectedly. That's the day when Jesus will return. Like a trap. For it will come on all who live on the face of the whole earth. But be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are, coming, that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus tells us to be on our guard, to keep our minds sharp and not dulled. What does it mean to have our minds dulled? What does he say here? Here Jesus says, with carousing and drunkenness and worries of this life. So I think we can divide those three words into two categories that Jesus is warning against. Carousing and drunkenness, partying, self-pleasure, uh, uh, um, enjoyment, um, all of those say, hey, Vicki, trust me, I understand tech issues. I've experienced them more than ever in the last few days. Um, so, so Jesus is saying first to be on guard against focusing on your own uh, enjoyment, the, own, the things that you want to, to have, the things that bring you pleasure or follow your preferences. Jesus is warning against drunkenness and, and, and carousal and partying. We could even include at this specific time, uh, watching too much television or too much Netflix to just sit and and kind of veg out or or whatever term you want to use, but to sit and be focused on ourselves and 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 what we want. Uh, Samuel actually had a lesson in school. I think it was yesterday talking about the difference between wants and needs. And I hope he learns that early because sadly most of us as as adult mature Christians have failed to understand the difference between wants and Needs, And that's part of what Jesus is saying here. He's saying don't be focused on the things that you want or the things that bring you pleasure or comfort. Be focused on the things of, of, my, of my standard. Be focused on the things of God. Be focused on the standard of the kingdom is what he says. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. 
Uh, but he also says, uh, he says, carousing drunkenness and worries of this life. Now, you remember, we talked about worry and anxiety. We talked about um, uh, 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 in, in, in Matthew 12, we already talked about uh, last two Sundays. Two Sundays ago, about the the danger of worry and anxiety and letting that take control of our lives when we take our focus off of God and take our focus onto our circumstances and we and we're overwhelmed with anxiety and worry and we can't focus on the things of the kingdom anymore. Jesus is warning against both of these extremes: either a, a, a focus on our own enjoyment or a focus on the things that maybe we can't control. You see, we're not supposed to take our focus off of anything, uh, off of, f- put our focus on anything to take it off of, of Jesus and, and his standard for us. Be alert, um, because G- because I am coming, he says, uh, uh, don't be dulled by carousing, drunkenness, worries of life, for that day will come on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come on all who live on the face of the whole earth. Jesus is going to return. And, and nobody can do anything about it to stop it. Nobody can do anything to make it happen. He's coming and he will judge between the righteous and the unrighteous. Now we have to stop for a minute here. And we read in multiple places um, where, where Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. right? Silently without us being aware. For, for example, Matthew 12, uh, 39 uh, but we can also see from the preceding verses here uh, in, in chapter 21 that, that Jesus is going to come in kind of a public way. So what does this mean? What does it mean that he's going to be both public and like a thief in the night? I think the reality that Jesus is trying to convey to us here in, Ma- in, in Luke 21 is that when Jesus does come, nobody will miss it. Now, we don't know when that will be. We don't know exactly what time. We don't have any idea what time or how we can make that happen. But when he does, nobody can deny it. We can try and deny it. We can try and figure it out now. But but when he comes, it'll be clear to all people and no one will be able to deny it. But be alert at all times. So instead of dulling our senses by carousing and worry and anxiety, we are to be alert at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. We have to, again, stop for a moment and say being alert is not being uh, perfectly prepared to read every sunset and every sign. Being alert is not saying that we have a chart that says when this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens, just then Jesus will come. It doesn't mean to be watchful as, as maybe a guard on a tower. It means to be alert and prepared so that when Jesus does come, our hearts are ready and, and, and waiting for him to, 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 to be our Lord. That means that we're, we're, we're practicing the, the, the things that God has called us to. Some call it spiritual disciplines. Uh, 200 years ago, they called it religious affections. We can call it whatever we want. But the things that we do that God has called us to, to be more like him, the, the, the marks of a Christian, prayer, reading our Bible, worship, uh, fasting and devotion, silence, solitude, scripture, memory, acts of service and evangelism, focusing on God's mission rather than our own. All of these things that Jesus calls us to, humility, meekness, mildness, and courage, uh, servant attitude, uh, uh, dying to ourselves as we talked about from, from um, Luke 14 not long ago, well, I think a week ago now, um, we're to be on alert, prepared, for Jesus coming, not looking out the door and waiting for it, not standing on the watchtower saying, when will it come? But being ready that when it does come, we're not found dulled. We're not found lacking. We're not found unprepared for Jesus. We're not found being lazy or not using the gift he's given us as we talked about with the parable of the miners. We're not found of wasting our life or wasting our time, but we're found to have been faithful servants because that's what we all desire right when jesus returns and we stand before that judgment seat and we hear not condemnation or 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 judgment but we hear from our lord well done good and faithful servant we can only expect to hear that if we are alert and prepared for his coming i want to read another verse first john 2 28 
You don't have to turn there, just listen, but you can mark it. 1 John 2, 28. John writes, So now, little children, John loves that phrase, by the way, little children. So now, little children, remain in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I don't want to be ashamed when I stand before Jesus. I don't want to have to look at myself and just say, I failed you. I want to have confidence, not in myself, but what he's done and what, what I have done following his command. And that's what Luke ends with when he says, um, but be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all that these things that are coming to, and to take place and to stand before the Son of God. We pray that we might have the strength and endurance to remain faithful no matter what challenge, no matter what may come, no matter what difficulty, no matter what virus or pandemic, no matter what may interfere with our lives. We can stand in confidence in God's will. And then finally, we pray and we work uh, and, and we strive and, and we follow God's plan so that we might stand before God. This is the same thing that John is writing about. This is the same uh, um, um, desire that we have that we would hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That we might stand before the Son of Man. That we might stand before God. That we might stand before our Savior. Not based on our own works or our own ways of salvation, but solely on the base of Jesus Christ and His grace given to us that we've accepted by faith. So don't be dulled by the things that we can fill our times with. Don't be dulled by um, uh, worthless endeavors or, or simple pleasures all the time. Not that you can't watch Netflix and you can't read a, a book that has no uh, redeeming value except entertainment. Not that you can't do those things. But don't let those things consume our lives. We're to be alert and prepared for Jesus' return. Because we don't know when it is. I'm not going to tell you it's coming sooner or later. I have no idea, but I do know that he is coming. And when he does come, we will know. And at that moment, when he finally does arrive, it'll be too late to set right what he changes in our lives. Father, we come before you today, and I thank you so much for the blessing of being able to join together over Facebook, Instagram, and other uh, technologies over the internet. Father, I pray that you would continue to speak to our hearts, continue to help us to live for you, help us to be prepared and alert for your coming. Let us do what you've called us to, use the resources you've given us, and run the race that you've laid before us. Continue to work, Father, to bring healing to those infected with the coronavirus. Continue to protect those who are serving in the midst of, of the coronavirus, doctors, nurses, all others who are working, first responders and grocery store clerks and restaurant employees and all these other folks. Father, we pray that you would end this pandemic. Father, we pray that you would use us in the midst and that you would prepare us to minister and to, to serve you in a greater and a better and a more um, Christ-like and Christ-focused way as we come to the other side. We love you, Father, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you all. Uh, look forward to seeing you again. Again, remember on Wednesdays, we get to come together twice. So we'll be uh, coming together uh, this evening at 630 for our uh, prayer time and Bible study. Uh, Brooke and Jeremy are going to be with us as well, uh, joining uh, some worship with us. So, so come back with us here on Facebook and on Instagram at 630 tonight. And then, of course, if you're not able to join us live, the videos will be up here uh, for you to catch later, or you can look on our website or our YouTube channel. Our website's ameliabaptistchurch.org, where you can find tons of things out about our church, where you can get involved um, in, in catching up on sermons and devotionals. You can also, there's also a prayer page where you can share prayer requests that we'll be praying for tonight at 6.30, so go and check that out. Uh, also, uh, for, for our members and any of you who might feel uh, led, you can also uh, give to support the ministry of Amelia Baptist Church and the Kingdom of God on our website. Uh, so check us out there. Our Facebook page is Amelia Baptist Church. Uh, there's two of them, so make sure you look for, for the right logo that you can see on our Facebook page here. Uh, but follow us there and catch up on all that's going on. We look forward to seeing you tonight. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 11. And look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday at 1045. Have a blessed day. Bye.